Hi, my name's Jovan and I've been working as a loud artist in the animation industry for a couple years now. And the most common question that I get asked when someone asks me about my job is, what is that? And usually I'll reply something like, it's like cameras, but in 3D with a few extra steps, but that just opens a whole new can of worms. So if you're someone wanting to know what a loud artist does, or if you're a loud artist wanting to explain to people what you do, I'm going to explain from my perspective what a loud artist is and does, and why in my completely unbiased opinion, it's the best and most crucial role in the entire animation pipeline. Every department will say that they're the most important department, but we really are. Now, as a quick precursor, this is a loud artist role as I've experienced it. I've been to four different companies over the past few years and each company has had a different way of describing the role that a loud artist does. So no one place has been exactly the same. So this is stuff that I've done, but I know there's also more things that a loud artist will do, which I'll try and explain as well at the end. But this is everything that I've done in my layout roles over the past few years. So in basic terms, a layout artist, also known as camera, is in charge of the cameras. That's the start of it. Whether it's ingesting real life camera track data, matching storyboards or previs, and adjusting focal lengths and apertures, understanding cameras and cinematography is a pretty crucial starting point for all layout artists in the industry. Now, different companies will call it different things, but from what I've experienced, most of the time, layout will be split into two major parts. You've got the first half, which is rough layout, and the second half, which is final layout. Now, this is completely dependent on the company itself, its size, the budget of a project. There's a million different factors that determines how big or how small the different layout departments are and what kind of work they get to do in between. But this is generally what seems to be the case. Now, the first stage of rough layout can often incorporate aspects of previs and assembly. Previs being the way of bringing storyboards into 3D before it becomes into an actual official production pipeline and assembly being the assembly or the setting up of a scene. Now, in very, very large companies, sometimes these departments will be separated, but oftentimes a rough layout artist role will incorporate some aspects of these two roles as well, which is why I thought it's important to mention. In this initial section of layout, you'll be given a storyboard and sometimes mixed in there some previs as well, of a sequence, which is a series of shots in a collection, kind of like a scene. And your job is to bring this pre-production picture into an actual production official standpoint. So in this stage, you'll be using official assets made by the modeling department. You'll be essentially bringing the bones of the story into its first stage of official production. This is also something that can separate the previous and layout departments, where previous are able to use more temporary artificial assets, whereas layout usually you have to be using production approved assets. Assembly is also a step that can be included in rough layout, where your role will be to set up the scene. Imagine you're playing in like a diorama or you've got a set in front of you and you've got to try and set up the scene to match a storyboard as much as possible. So you've got an empty room and you've got a bunch of couches off to the side with chairs and people and you've got to put it all into the set to make the scene happen. The next stage of a layout artist is to bring in the characters often in a low poly, also known as a optimized or early version or lower resolution version of a character with a less complex rig used for speed and efficiency in this stage. The layout artist will also bring in a camera and stage the shot and the characters in a way that matches the storyboard and previews from before. If the characters are moving in the storyboard, then you'll add some basic animation to get the idea of the scene across. If the camera's moving, you'll do the same with the pan, tilt and roll controls and the tracks, booms, dollies and zooms if necessary. Most of the time as well, you'll be using an actual camera rig, which could look something like this, but it changes depending on the company that you're working for. Everyone's got their own bespoke versions of pipelines and rigs that you'll be having to learn each time you go to new company but most of the time things will be pretty transferable throughout then once your first pass allowed is complete you'll submit it for reviews also known as dailies where your supervisor or lead will will review it give you notes to address and eventually sign off and be ready to be sent off to the animation department to be used and that's essentially the role of a rough layout artist you'll be the first ones to help with the storytelling in 3d so in this, you're setting up the scenes, setting up the characters and setting up the cameras, getting it ready for the animation department to do their fine tuned animation on the characters. One of the really fun things in the layout department is you kind of get to see the projects go from start to finish. Where rough layout, you're there helping the storytelling and helping everything come to life. In final layout, which we'll get to next, you're fine tuning the, the end of the project. So you get to see things from the very start to often almost the very end, which is a pretty unique spot to be in, in the animation industry. Now in final layout, there's a lot more smaller details you gotta look out for. So it's a lot more small camera touches, adjustments to the focal length, the aperture, and finalizing the camera moves, because once the camera's done here, it doesn't get touched again, and that will be what the shot looks like 
after compositing and effects and the finalizing departments have had their way with it. By this stage, the animation is usually completed as is a lighting and surfacing pass. So your role here, depending on the company and project, is to perfect the camera because once this is done, the shot's pretty much finished. So in final layout, this includes any adjustments to the focus of the camera, with the aperture and bits of camera shake or keep alive to make the camera feel more realistic, and any final touches to the actual animation of the camera and movement itself. Now, these are the main two parts of layout that I've experienced so far, but as I said, there's a whole lot more that can be included as well. A lot of these other types of layout are seen more so in live action. So this includes any sort of camera tracking or match moving that you'll do, which is where you'll be ingesting real life camera data, you'll take a camera track and then bring that into a 3D scene. There's also set dressing, which is basically like assembly where you're setting up the scene itself and dressing the set. There's also layout in the sense of just setting up the actual scenes themselves with the characters where you'll be given a camera, but your job is to sort of do a mix of set dressing and the first pass of animation where you'll set up, where you'll set the scene up and get it ready for the next stages to be used. It can be very differing between different companies. At some places you'll see it called the camera department where they just focus on the cameras. Other companies are called staging. Some places call it layout assembly. There's a whole different range depending on where you want to go and what you want to do. So it's important to know a sort of general overview of each of the different departments to do. And so that's what a layout artist does, or at least what I've done as a layout artist over the past few years of my career. It's been super enjoyable so far and I continue to love what I do almost every single day. And I definitely recommend it for anyone looking in the animation industry at a potential career choice. There's such a wide range of different things that you can be doing. And it's a very transferable task if you want to go from layout to previews, or you can step, or if you really enjoy the animation side of things, you can move into animation. There's a lot that you can do from this stage as well, which is great. So if you really love storytelling or camera work or set dressing and scenes, it's a really cool place to look into. If you do have any questions or comments, please do leave them down below and I'll try to respond to as many as possible. Or if you have any one-on-one -on -one questions, I've got my email on LinkedIn down below if you wanna reach out and have a chat. On this channel, I try to make tutorials and videos to help people who are learning 3D for the first time. And I love to just learn and grow and continuously learn new things and help people learn these new things as well alongside me.